Welcome to Skazellavision. Today's project is going to be an art felt project and it is our fringed cowl. This are both samples actually of our fringed cowl that are sold in kits and today we're going to make this third color which we call submarine. As you can see these two pieces look a little bit different. This one versus huh, this one. Quite a bit difference in size, right? Well, they were both made out of the same kit, but they were made by two different people. And one person felted theirs a lot longer than the other one felted theirs, and that is the only difference. So if you would like to have something that's very loose um, and airy, you're going to want to go on the light side of felting. And if you want something that's a little bit denser and thicker and perhaps maybe a little bit stronger, then you're going to want to felt it a little bit more. And the holes that are in here are going to be the holes that you actually pull your scarf through on. So it's good to know where you want to put them. Usually you want to have some close to the ends and do a series of small holes on each end, big holes on one, small on another, and this way when you fold it in the end, you can have your choice as to where to run it through. So what we're going to do is we're first going to take our roving yeah, sort of put it through a different hole. We're going to take our roving and we're going to get it tacked into our paper. So in your kit you should have been given one hank of roving and one sheet of the art felt paper. Now the art felt paper does not have a wrong side or a right side but your sheet is going to be approximately 18, 19, 20 inches wide and approximately like 58, 59 inches long. So we can't fit the whole thing in the screen, but you can't work the whole thing at once either. So what we're going to do is we want to cover this whole piece of paper with our roving. That's how far we want it to go. So you know it's got to be pretty thin. Um, to help me out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my paper in half and there's a crease right there. This is where half of my paper is. And I'm gonna do one half at a time. So I'm gonna put a little needle there, or uh, one of my barb needles. You should have gotten two of these. They're actually called felty needles, and they have barbs at the bottom. And these little barbs are what's gonna carry your roving through the paper, and that's how it's gonna be held onto the paper. Now make sure that you have a good surface underneath, um, some kind of a tack board, this here is one of our art felt tack boards. It is self-healing. It lasts for a long time. This is a super duper large one. Um, you can also buy smaller ones. So you can do this, you know, in section by section by section. You don't need to cover your whole surface at one time. So if you only have a 12 by 24 inch tack board, then what I would do is I would lay the 24 inch one like this, and you're just going to do 12 inches at a time. And that's really not a problem. But we're going to start um, we have our halfway point there, so I'm actually going to take my roving and I'm going to split it in half so I know pretty much when I'm halfway so I get my whole sheet covered. Um, since roving doesn't tear easily because the fibers are really super duper long, when your hands are close together I'm going to pull my hands apart and I'm going to give it a little gentle tug and then as you can see it just comes apart very nicely. And these little wispy ends are fantastic to be using to actually draft your roving out. Um, so which end do we want to start with? I guess it really doesn't matter. I'm going to lay my roving out and then I'm going to tack it in. Um, at least I'm going to lay out bits and pieces, not just 12 inches. I'm just going to do a little bit bigger of a section before I tack it in. What I do want to do is I want to make sure that I am cross-hatching it. By cross-hatching it, I mean that the fibers are going in one direction for one layer and then another direction for the other layer. And when you cross-hatch things, um, the fibers, they just become stronger that way. If they're all going in one direction, it's easy to pull it apart. Um, they, they spread much easier, whereas when they're interlayered, it's almost like having it woven. So the drafting process really consists of just pulling out very small amounts of fibers at a time like this. Um, and, uh, you know, it's actually, you know, thinking about it, we, we have this as our fringe scarf too, so we want to make sure that we have some roughly fringed edges too. Um, so we're not going to take it all the way to the edge. We, we have fringes on this edge here, so we want to make sure that we have fringes down here. And the way to do that 
is to pull, we're going to pull this down. We want to keep this very, very fine down at the end, um, sort of like this, and uneven. And that is what's going to give us fringes. Um, if it's all even, it will be an even, very, very even piece. There we go. Um, when we lay down our roving, there's lots of different ways that you can do it. Uh, because it's a multicolored roving, um, the colors blend into each other. So you sort of want to use that to your advantage. Now here we've got a lot of gray going. Remember, we've got to do some cross hatching, but we want to keep it thin. So when I get, say, one layer down here, I'm actually going to go off and I'm going to cross hatch here. And this way, I know that that's going to be strong enough in that area. Now notice this is still really loose down here. So I'm actually going to just pull some little edges out because this is my fringy section. I don't want it to be totally too thin, but I also don't want it to be too thick. And it will naturally pull. So, all right, so I'm going to continue going in this direction. I've got some green coming out here, and uh, I want to utilize that green as much as I can. Just make it go very lightly here. And yep, I'm going to start doing some green in the other direction. And I'm actually taking it on top of some of this gray, because some of this gray here did not have cross, cross hatching going on at all. So it'll just make it blend a little bit. And I like blending the colors here and there. There we go. Now, if I were doing it on a small board, what I would do now is I would actually start tacking this all in. I try not to over tack my roving because the whole point of art felt is to speed up the process of what would normally be wet felting or needle felting, where needle felting you would just tack, 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 tack until it was felted. And wet felting where you actually have to lay it all out and then roll it and roll it and roll it while it's wet to get it felted. But in this method, we just need to tack it in so that when I lift up my paper, it doesn't fall off. And you can see if I lift up my paper, turn it upside down, you can see where the roving has been pulled out to the other side. And that's all nicely tacked in. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to do some more cross hatching here. And I've got some blue starting to come out. I want to sort of have some of that blue come up in this direction. So I'm going to pull it there and I'm going to pull it a little bit. Um, rather than have it go in, in all these stripes, I just want to pull the colors just slightly. So I'm going to keep the blue over here and um, do my cross hatching very lightly. I don't want my piece to be too thick, but I don't want it to be too thin either. So, there we go. Now remember, all you see is on this side is this side. You got to consider on the other side, once the paper dissolves, you're going to see a whole other pattern form. So, um, that's a uh, interesting thing. I'm going to make a little bit of a hole here. I don't want it to be totally even. I, I don't want the piece to be totally even. So I'm going to go a little wacky here. Um, got some more gray coming up. Um, I'm going to take this down a little bit more. I want to make sure, I'm just going to break that in a little bit. And then have all this green here. I need to cross hatch it so that it stays strong. This, by the way, is my half mark here. And this is what roving I have left, so I'm doing quite well. Uh, right on target. If I was a little short, I would be okay too. Um, I like 
like to have it look a little more colorful, so I'm just going to add a little green up in there. There we go. And down here is where I start having some of this gray. So I think, there we go, I'm going to actually carry a little gray over in here. I need to do a little cross hatching there. And I'm going to have a little gray on the edge there. And notice my edges are not even, and that's okay, because on this one, we like to have little fringes and, and uneven edges. Um, it simply adds a little bit of flavor to the actual cow. So, there we go. Now, once it gets towards the end, it likes to pull out a little bit thicker. So just be careful that you don't get it laid down too thick. Um, we got that there. We do have, there's a little bit of lightness in here, and I'm not caring for that too much. So I'm just going to add a little bit of color. Um, here we go. And then I'm going to take my needle, and I'm going to tuck it all in. pretty well tacked in. Um, I'm noticing here it's just a little light as far as I can see through to the paper, which is okay, but it's a little too much, I think. So I just added a little bit of gray in there. I could add any color I wanted, but now I've got this piece done, and so I now I actually need to finish the other half. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this half up and over the other side of the table. There we go. And now I'm going to work on this. Um, I'm going to finish off with the gray and the green that I had going here. Oops. I've actually got a little bit of blue in there too, so it makes it for an interesting mix. And I'm just trying to stay as even as I can because it gives me the most even finished piece. Um, as you can see, these little tufts towards the end, they get a little uneven, and so I'm going to try to even that out a little. Yep. With the, there we go. Just do it a little like this. It actually looks pretty cool. Gives it a little cross hatching. And then I'm going to continue laying out. See, now that I have this roving again, I can do it really fine. And there we go. And I gotta remember to do my cross hatching. my piece Oops. and um, it's all laid out and of course I can't see the whole thing but you can move it down this way and move it down this way and you can see what it looks like so now what we need to do is create holes it's sort of like where's the holes um, and there's several different ways you can do the holes you can do the holes in advance which would mean right now and um, or you can do the holes when the piece is actually wet you can put it in the dryer take it out cut the holes and then put it back in. So I'm actually going to cut some holes now. I'm going to fold this in half like this 
and um, then I'm going to make a small right in here let's see here let's move this down so it's in the screen I'm going to make a small area of um, holes here and I'm going to create one bigger one here I'm going to do a couple of smaller ones I'm just going to keep getting smaller and smaller okay so when I open this up you will see I have some holes cut there and what I'll do is if you don't have one of these little gadgets it's okay you don't need one but they are fun to use this is made by Clover and it actually has five barb needles in it and uh, it will actually give you some nicer edges if you just want to go around the holes a little bit um, there we go it just keeps the roving you know nice and tight around the holes um, and if you want it, I mean, really, really even, you can actually cut it again. It depends on how you want your holes, you know, to look, how natural you want them to look. But um, this way I've got a couple here, and um, I think I'm going to maybe take a few over in this corner. Um, just maybe one or two small ones here. Just some, some longer ones, maybe. Um, and maybe, there we go, another one there. Um, and then, oh, you can also just use your other needle. And there you go. And that is where your holes are going to be. These are pretty narrow little openings, so usually I'll put it a little bit further apart, but um, it's always fun to try something different. If you notice on, for instance, this piece, uh, we have some really, really tiny holes, and then we have some bigger holes on this end. So it's always interesting. Um, you can play it however you want. Wherever you want to have holes, you can put the holes. You can put them in the middle of your piece if you want. So since we have some big ones there, I'm actually going to uh, flip this all the way around. Notice how the roving stays on there nicely. And I'm just going to come over here. I'm actually going to make these a little bit rounder. Just by cutting them a little bit more like that. And then... Oops. There we go. I'm going to make two there. Um, yeah. And I think maybe I'll put a few up in here too, up in the neck. Um, there's one. Put another one here. Maybe one right at the edge. How's that? Now, if you want to, you can get very strategic with your holes. Um, and put them very strategically, you know, make yourself a pattern of how something's going to work. Use a piece of muslin or something and cut yourself holes. Um, right here I got it a little close to the edge so and since I got it a little close to the edge I'm actually going to take some of the roving that was left on one of these and I'm actually just going to take it around that edge a little bit because um, I don't want the, the hole to actually tear there we go now I will say holes turn out better in general when they're actually cut after the piece is partially cut. Um, and I noticed this got a little thin here, so I'm just going to put this here. So, but you can do it both ways, and there we go. 
And I think I have enough holes. I've got holes down on this end, I've got some big holes on that end, and I think I'm ready to go. So what I'm going to do now is get my piece wet and ready and prepared for the dryer. Alrighty, so I've actually got myself a piece of plastic here. The plastic that you need for the felting process needs to be a little bit wider than your actual piece, and it also needs to be a little bit longer than your piece. In this case, it's about 60 inches um, long, and would we say about 18, 19 inches wide, and what works perfect is a 33 gallon size garbage bag. And if you cut it up the side seams and then open it up, you have yourself the perfect piece. You can also, do uh, painter's plastic works great for these large pieces and so on. Um, you can recycle bags, but if you have a, a long piece that's, you know, that's going to work, it, it's, it's actually a little bit nicer than having to piece it. So one thing, um, if you want to set your piece aside for a night or something, you can actually use the plastic that you pull out, put it on top, and then roll your piece and you know you could actually set it aside for months if you wanted to um, and then you could come back and actually do the finished felting process but what I've just done is you could just roll it up I've just rolled it up very sloppily I would say roll it up much nicer than this but you can do that and you can set it aside but for today what we're going to do is we are actually going to use the plastic to felt it on and so I'm going to let it hang off one end of my table and I'm going to start with another end. Um, what I need to do is I need to center it on my plastic. There we go. And then when I start it I need to make sure that my edge will fold over like this, okay? Um, I need to make sure that when I start rolling it that there's no roving or paper touching roving or paper. So with that much on the end, I should be fine. And I've got myself armed with a, um, a compressed uh, pump sprayer here. And these guys cost around $10 at your hardware store. They work great. So if you're going to do a lot of art felt, I would say invest in one of these. You can also, if you don't have one, take a cup, put a piece of saran wrap on top of it, poke holes, and shake out water. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can actually wet your piece. But today we're going to use this. And this goes very quickly. I'm going to make sure that everything is nicely saturated. You want it nice and wet. Now, the water will beat up in the beginning on top of the roving. It takes a little while for it to sink in. So don't worry about it. It will start to sink in on its own. You can see how it's starting to do that right away. So I'm giving it a little time to sink in. Spray it a little bit further down. starting to take the water now. 
and so I can start rolling it. Now right here you can still see the difference. This is paper that's not wet. This is paper that is wet. When the paper becomes wet, it becomes transparent. And you can also see in these areas here, this is really, really nicely soaked with water. This is not. However, I don't want to use my fingers and touch down on it. When I actually roll it up with the plastic, it will compress the water in it. You can see here, when I press down, you can actually see, um, might be a little bit of a reflection, but uh, the, there's no air left in between. I've actually got it nicely wet. So I'm going to make sure that it all looks nice and soaked, and it does. Now right in here, I'm going to get it a little wetter. I want this to collapse a little more. It looks like there's some air bubbles in there. and. Um, Although I'll squeeze those out with the plastic. I don't like to have too many of them when I'm rolling. I sort of like to have it all nice and compressed to start with. You can also, just if you want to see how it works, is use a piece of plastic. Let's see if we have an extra piece. And we do. And you can put it down like this and just press. And then you can get your air bubbles out go. And now you can see how nicely pressed that is and how well and how wet that actually is, which is great. So I'm going to continue doing the rest of the piece. And as you can see, I'm doing this little bit by little bit. So um, you know, I don't have to get it all wet at once. And actually, even after getting it wet, I, I prefer actually to go ahead and, and put it in the dryer for the felting process right away. But I have on occasion actually waited a day or two. And um, I haven't had a problem whatsoever with this Shepel roving. There's no chemicals or anything remaining in it, so there's nothing to actually get old or anything. Um, and because it's pretty much airtight by the time it gets all rolled up, there's usually not any kind of a problem with it growing mold or anything like that. There we go. Okay, we're getting close to the end. It sort of sounds like a sea lion barking. Coming back to some holes here. You want to make sure that the fringes on the end get wet too. Everything needs to be wet. If it's not wet, it doesn't fill. We don't need soapy water or anything. Just regular water does fine. I'm actually going to use this a little bit here again. I want to have a feeling this is nice and wet, just not flattened. Right, there we go. This, however, is not wet. You can tell that right away. You can see right here some of the uh, stuff is still hanging over, so I'm gonna get the rest in. I think we're getting it off. We got a little puddle of water going there, and that's okay. I'd rather see a puddle of water than no water at all. So, and we've got a really good puddle here, so I'm just going to let it go right onto my board, and I will wipe that up in a few minutes. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to get it ready for the dryer. So I'm going to show you how this can actually be done without pantyhose. Um, you can take yourself some rubber bands and just rubber band the section. You don't want it too tight, but 
take it and go through here. That's probably not tight enough. I'm going to do a double whammy there. Right. That there. I'm going to take this, put it around here. And take this end. And get a double whammy there. I'm going to do a few more. I'm going to do one more in the middle here. Just want to make sure that it doesn't come undone in the dryer. That's the whole point. Um, before I started using hose, this is what I always did, and it worked just fine. But then I discovered that if I use a trouser sock, it goes a little bit quicker. So if you want to see how a trouser sock is used, you can watch one of the other videos um, on one of the other pieces, because I do believe almost every single of the other pieces we use a trouser sock in the video. So. Um, but this one looks like it's going to hold up pretty good. I'm going to put one more on the end here. Do a triple whammy there to make sure it stays in place. And uh, I'm going to haul it off to the dryer. We have taken our fringe cowl out of the dryer and now we're going to open it up and we're going to see what has become of it, how much it has felted. So it's been in about 15 minutes and we're going to see it'll probably need to go in again, but this will at least give us an idea. Hmm. rubber band all these. Ugh. And one more that's in the middle and I'm going to cheat. I'm actually just going to cut that one. There we go. Alright. The magic moment. This one is ending up being a little sudsy too, which is a little odd. They're usually not sudsy. Um, we've got a little bit of an imprint from our rubber bands. That's pretty cool actually. I've never had that happen before, but um, we do. See that? But it's not like it's a bad one or a permanent one or anything. Um, it looks actually like our piece has felted quite nicely. Um, I can, the whole thing is now unrolled. And if I look at the piece, it's, it's still very fine, but um, if you look at the back, the back of the paper, you can see that it, it's nicely wrinkled. And so it has felted. And you know what? We do have a little bit of an imprint here um, from the felting, which uh, is actually, like I said, sort of cool. Um, and I haven't had that before, so that's very unique. This side is not quite as felted as the other side. Um, and it could probably stand to be felted just a tad bit more. Not a lot though. So this side is actually quite felted. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm going to do the roll up one more time and I'm going to put it back in. And what I'm going to do for the roll up this time though is I'm going to put it so that the tight end that was already felted, very much so, which is this end, I'm going to put it on the inside. So I'm going to unfold that, there we go, and um, I'm going to actually fold this up, and I'm going to roll it, there we go. I don't want, I want it to roll, or to felt to itself, so I'm going to try to keep it as flat as I can, there we go. Ah. <sighs> Alrighty. I want to keep those fringes. And then when I get down to this end, there we go. Once more, I am going to do the same thing I did before, but I'm not going to use quite as many rubber bands this time. Um, even though 
I like the effect that it gave on that last one, but I want it to get a little bit more action in the dryer and felt a little quicker. So I'm going to just rubber band it. Oops, try not to get it too. There we go. And, and rubber band this really nice and tight. Okay, so we have it out of the dryer again. And uh, let's see what happened. That looks to me like it felted somewhere, which is great. And, yep. I think I had it in there for an extra 13 minutes. Um, and it's looking a little sudsy, which is a little odd. Um, somebody might have put soap in my bottle at some point because I did not use any soap and um, it is a little sensey. But that's okay. It will all wash out without a problem. And now when I'm looking at my piece, it's actually looking fantastic. I'm looking at the back here and I can see how my paper is wrinkled. Look how nicely my holes formed there. And um, as I unwrap the rest, I can see, I'm actually going to take it out of the plastic now, so we can actually see what we're looking at. There we go. And uh, looks like we got ourselves a nice little cow. The only thing is, is you can't see all our fringes right now, so we will, once we remove the paper, you will see the uneven, uneven edges and the fringes, and this is going to be a really uh, beautiful and interesting piece, I can tell already. I love it when they're a little awkward. It makes for such a nice piece. So that side is a little bit wider than this side and um, that'll make it even more because this will lovely, oh see I can actually visualize this already, this will go lovely uh, through this hole over here and then you'll have this really beautiful part there. So um, I'm really happy. I know you probably can't see much, but what we'll do is we're going to go take it and dissolve the paper and then we're going to dry it and then you'll see the finished piece. Actually, you probably already saw it. It's on the cover of your kit. So anyways, that's that. Well, let's go dissolve the paper. Now we are going to remove the paper off of our fringe cowl. There's lots of different ways to do it, and the method we're going to use right now is with a pot of boiling water. So just to show you how easy it is to dissolve this paper when you actually have boiling water, I'm going to just stick a, oops, stick a little end in here, and you can see it's just going to dissolve. See how that paper is gone? It just disappeared. So I'm actually going to put my whole piece in here, and um, I'm going to swirl it around. Now, the problem with this method <laughs> is that you are going to have a little bit of bleeding from your roving because most roving cannot withstand boiling temperatures or the color in most roving cannot. It's not meant to, so um, you don't want to leave it in here too long. But a nice pot like this, and this happens to be a, a roaster oven, um, if you can get your water to boil in it is a really great way and a really fast way to do it versus using, you know, kettles of boiling water. The only thing you do want to be careful of is that you do not burn yourself and spill water all over you. So try to keep your roaster oven or whatever it is, pot that you have as close as you can to the sink and then just transfer your piece directly from the pot to the sink. And if you don't have the sink nearby, put it in a bowl and carry it in a bowl. Don't just let it drip because this is boiling water and it will burn you. And then put it in your sink and then rinse it. And if you have a sprayer, I always like using a sprayer, it's a little more forceful. And I can see if there's any um, starch still coming out. When there's a lot of little white bubbles like that, that's the starch that's still coming out of my piece. So I know there's still starch in there. And as soon as I get it temperature-wise good so that I can handle it, and I can, I'm gonna start just squeezing it out like this. Okay. 
and I think I got all the paper out. The paper, once it gets hot, um, if it gets hot, it just turns gummy. If it hits boiling water, it actually dissolves into the water. But when it's gummy, it will just create a stiff piece. And if you're making a bowl or something, that's great. But for a scarf, you want every little bit of that gumminess out. And I'm not wringing it, I'm just squeezing it. Wringing it might distort the shape. I'm going to squeeze it as much as I can. And then you'll be able to see. Ah, perfect weight. Very nice. How it comes out of the dryer. These are our holes we cut. You can see how nice they are. We've got our fringes down here that we were aiming for. I'm going to tear them apart just a little bit. So we've got some uneven edges, which is nice. And we've got some on the sides too, because we just left the sides. So that gives it a natural look. And then we've got our big holes down at this end. And it's pretty strong, as you can see. And those little rubber band marks that we had, well, they're still in there a little bit, but they just add a little bit of texture. You can barely see them. So now I'm going to take this, I'm going to roll it in a towel, and I'm going to lay it down to dry. <laughs>